Hello, my name is Amy, and I wrote a book called Amy's Brass Band. I'd like to read that to you right now, if that's okay. Here it is. This is Amy's Brass Band. Hi, my name is Amy, and I play in a brass band. Have you ever heard a brass band perform? It's made up of many different brass and percussion instruments. When we all get together, we make music. Brass bands were created many years ago in Great Britain. That's why we sometimes call them British brass bands. Today, there are brass bands all over the world. And here I am showing you where the island of Great Britain is. And you see all of these animals playing different brass and percussion instruments. You see the camel playing drums with a drumstick in its mouth, or the flamingo playing the cornet. People first created brass bands so that they could have something fun to do after working hard all day. Many brass bands were made, of, made up of people who worked at the same company or factory or, or attended the same church. So these men are coming up the lift from the coal mine or colliery. And they're putting down their axe and their hard hat and they're picking up their instruments so that they can play music. Brass bands are made up of many different brass and percussion instruments grouped into sections. The largest section is the cornet section. The cornets play the melody much of the time. Most cornets are the same size and play high sounds called pitches, but one the soprano cornet is smaller and plays the highest pitches in the whole brass band. So here is our cornet section. And here are the two kinds of cornets. Most people play this cornet right here. But as we go through the alphabet up, we go B flat, C, D, E flat to a higher pitched cornet. It's a little bit smaller. The smallest section of the brass band isn't a section at all. It's just one person. One flugelhorn player sits next to the three tenor horn players. The tenor horns are a bit bigger than the cornets, so they play pitches that are a bit lower. As a brass instrument gets bigger, it plays lower pitches. So here is our tenor horn section, and there's the flugel player on the end. Here's tenor horn and flugel horn. The baritone and euphonium sections make up the next row. Baritones and euphoniums can play most of the same the same pitches, but baritones make a brighter sound and euphoniums make a mellower sound. This is because the tubing on a baritone stays the same for much of the instrument like a wrapping paper tube. But a euphonium's tubing gets bigger as it goes like an ice cream cone or maybe a traffic cone. So here is the euphonium and baritone section and there I am right there. And here is a baritone right here and a euphonium. The trombones are the most unique brass instrument in the band. All brass instrument players use their vibrating lips like blowing raspberries to play notes into the mouthpiece like this. And then we put that into a mouthpiece. 
And when we put that into a brass instrument, it gets louder and we can play different pitches um, just like that. But there's something different about trombones. So all brass instrument, all brass instrument players use their vibrating lips to play notes into the mouthpiece. And almost all instru brass instruments use valves to change how high or low they sound. But trombones are the only brass instruments that don't have valves. Instead, a trombone player changes the pitch by making the this, this slide longer or shorter. So remember how when you have a bigger brass instrument, it plays lower pitches. So the trombone players are making their instrument bigger by extending the slide. There are two tenor trombones and one bass trombone in a brass band. So here's our trombone section for the brass band. And here are our trombones. We have a tenor trombone and a bass trombone. So we have two tenor trombones and one bass trombone in the brass band and the orchestra. <clears throat> the basses, sometimes called tubas, are the biggest instruments in the band. They're called basses because like the bass voice in a choir, the tubas are the bass voice of the brass band. Within this section, there are two smaller basses and two bigger basses. The smaller ones sometimes play the melody, while the bigger ones usually play the, the bass notes for the band. So here is our tuba or bass section. And here are our basses. We have B flat bass, that's lower. And then we go up the pitches, B flat, C, D, E flat. And we have a slightly smaller E flat bass. The percussion section is a very important part of a brass band. It makes the music sound complete by adding a twinkle to the pretty sections, booming rolls to the dramatic sections, and helping the whole band stay together on the same beat. So we have here the xylophone, cymbals, bass drum, a drum set, and timpani. The conductor stands in front of the band. This person waves the stick called a baton in a pattern to tell the band members what beat they're on in the music. The conductor also tells the band members to get louder, softer, speed up, or slow down. So here's our Here's our conductor of our brass band. Now, you all are about to become conductors because I have included the conducting patterns in my book. So we're gonna practice these. So the conductor tells the band how many beats are in each measure. So if there are two beats in a measure, like a march, we're gonna practice two. So get your conducting batons out and we're gonna practice, ready? One, two, one, two, one, two. Count out loud with me. One, two. Dun, 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 Good. Next, we're gonna try three, like a waltz. Three, I'll show you that one. Ready? Get your conducting batons. You want a pencil? These work pretty well, like a waltz. One, two, three. One, two, three. Dun, 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 dun. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. Next, we have four. Ready? One, two, three, four. Down, side, side, up. One, two, three, four. One more time. Good job. Four. Good. You are all conductors. Wonderful. Okay. We're going to go on. I'm going to put my trusty baton to the side. Brass bands can do many different things through their music. Some brass bands make people happy by playing music in the park on a nice day. 
Some brass bands challenge their members to play as well as they can by playing difficult music in competitions with other brass bands. Here's the brass band championships in this picture. Brass band championships happen all over the world. Some brass bands teach their children about music and how to work together as a team in their band. And this picture is of a brass band from Uganda teaching, their, teaching these children how to work together as a team to play beautiful music. Some brass bands play music to raise money for charity and good causes. This is a brass band marching through a town in England to raise money for cancer research. Brass bands play in many different places for different reasons, but every brass band plays for the love of music. And here's my brass band. Well, I hope you've enjoyed um, listening, to, listening to me read this book for you. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always reach out and find me. And I'd love to answer any questions about the brass band that you might have. Thanks, and have a great day.